this lesson we will look at the electrostatic section of the physics syllabus now first and foremost we must know for this section that we get two types of charges we get a positive charge and a negative charge and we must also know that when we have an object which has both positive and negative charges the positive charges will never move only the electrons can move so only your negative charges on your object will move or be transferred to another object so we have a number of ways which we can charge objects so by charging objects we mean that we give them either a balance of positive and negative charges or an excess of negative or an excess of positive so the first way to do that is by frictional contact so friction and contact will charge a an object with e either positive or negative charges we can earth an object in which your electrons move into the earth as we show here and your object then becomes positively charged or by induction we can force an object to be either positively or negatively charged depending on the charge of the object that we use in the induction process so neutral objects or neutral pieces of equipment will have an equal number of positive and negative charges so your negative charge is simply balanced out by a positive charge giving the object a neutral charge objects are charged by the movement of electrons as we've said you your positive charges will never move so your your objects are therefore charged by your movement of electrons only a negatively charged object has an excess of electrons as a positively charged object has a deficiency of electrons so we will always describe the charge of an object in terms of electrons because these are the only charges that are able to move so charges exert a force on each other uh, your like charges repel so two positive charges will repel each other two positive uh, so two negative charges will repel each other whereas a positive and a negative charge will attract each other opposites attract we could use an electroscope, which is an instrument used to determine the charge of an object. So if we are unsure of the charge, whether it is positive or negative of an object, we can use an electroscope to determine that. Then we need to know the difference between conductors and insulators. So a conductor is a material through which charge can move. So this is a material through which your electrons can move um, resulting in a change in the charge of an object whereas an insulator is a material which does not allow charge to move so an insulator will not conduct your electrons and therefore will not lead to a change in charge of an object when we look at conservation of charge charge is neither created nor destroyed your charge can only be transferred from one object to another but the total amount of charge remains constant. So pretty much what that is telling us is no charge can ever be created or destroyed. When we transfer charge from one object to another, we are simply moving the charge to the next object. But the total amount of charge that we started with will be at the end, the exact same amount, simply on different objects and split into different ratios. When conductors touch, their charge is shared equally. So if you have a metal sphere, two metal spheres, both have different charges, and you now touch them together, at the end of that, they will both have the exact same charge. So simply, you add all of your charge together and then divide it by two, and that will be your charge left on each of your metal spheres. Now you will get quite a few questions we will go through them later on, but they'll give you two charge spheres and say, we've got nine nanoculums of charge on metal sphere one and six on the other. When we touch them together, what is left on both? Yeah. And you simply add them together and divide by two in order to work that out because your charge is shared equally between your two conductors. And we look at Coulomb's law, which is very similar to our Newton's law of universal gravitation. However, now we are dealing with charges. So it's simply the force between two point charges and it's determined by Coulomb's law. 
So Coulomb's law states that the force between two charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the distance between the charges squared. Now that is simply the written out way to describe our formula. F being our force of attraction or repulsion equals K, which is a constant, 9 times 10 to the 9, that will be on your formula sheet, Q1, Q2, which is the charges of your two point charges, over R squared, which is the distance between them. Now you must always remember that your distance is in meters and your charge is in coulombs, and your direction must be included because your force is a vector quantity. Your forces can be added to determine your resultant force. Now that is in a case where they give you four point charges and you and they ask you what happens to the third one or what is the resultant force on the third one. Um, so we use that they can all be added or subtracted depending on their direction to work out a resultant force. Coulomb's law is only valid for point charges but it works for charged spheres too. So we need to know this conversion table over here. We need to know how to work with millicoulombs, microcoulombs, nanocoulombs, and picocoulombs. So this is simply how we would work with that. If we are given a millicoulomb, so we, they say we have nine millicoulombs, we simply go nine times 10 to the minus three to get it into coulombs. And the same for the rest of our units over here. Then we look at electric fields. When we look at electric fields, we need to know that it is a region of space in which an electric charge will experience a force. So any charge object alters the space around it by creating an electric field. And the direction of an electric field is the direction that a positive charge would move in. So when we look at electric fields and the field lines surrounding it, you will, you will often be asked to draw the electric field and use field lines to explain it. If we look at a positive charge, our field lines are going outwards because a positive charge would be repelled by our positive point charge over here. And therefore our field lines move outwards because they show the direction of movement of a positive charge. Whereas if we look at a negative, our positive charge would move inwards, a force of attraction, and therefore our field lines move in towards the negative charge. So our field lines, we have arrows on the lines which represent the direction that, that a positive charge would move. Point away from a positive, as we've said, and into a negative, as we've said. They're drawn closer where the field is stronger. They don't cross or touch, they are parallel always. They're perpendicular to the surface, as we can see. And the greater the charge, stronger the field, and therefore more electric field lines. In a uniform field where you don't have two points, you have charged plates. So this would be a positively charged plate and a negatively charged plate. The distance between your field lines remains constant. So your distance here and your distance here will remain constant between all field lines in your field. And your electrostatic force remains constant. And we work that electrostatic force out using F over Q. And that is simply constant because your field lines are always at the same distance and therefore your point charges in the field will always experience the same force or the same electrostatic force. In a non-uniform field, we can see that we have a positive here and a negative here. Our field lines go from positive to negative because a positive charge would move that way. We have field lines going from our positive to our negative. We can see closer to the positive charge, we have field lines that are closer and they get further apart as we move. So our distance between our field lines gets larger. The electrostatic force changes, it is not constant. So your electrostatic force here would be greater than here simply because your field lines are closer together over here and further apart over here. And therefore we use F equals KQ being our first charge and Q being our second charge over R squared or E being our electrostatic force equals KQ over R squared when Q is not given. So this is just an indication of an electric field. So we have a positive and a negative moving from positive to negative. And you can see they are perpendicular from the surface, closer together around the point charge and further apart, further away. 
When we have two positive charges, we know that they will repel each other and therefore our field lines simply give a blank in the middle or a dead zone as they call it. And we must remember that when we draw this dead zone, we must always draw it further from the charge with a greater charge. So here we have six and here we have three. So our lines will extend further away from the six simply because it is a stronger charge. The positive six repels more than the three and therefore our dead zone is further from the six. Looking at electric fields, our electric field strength is the force experienced by a positive point charge when placed in an electric field. The electric field at a point is the force per unit positive charge. So an electric field, E, which is nanocoulombs to the minus one, equals your force in newtons over your charge in coulombs. And you, can, you must only use this in a uniform field. Now a uniform field is one in which we have two plates and we don't have variance in our field lines. So you will use E equals F over Q in a uniform field to work out your electrostatic force.